Hey Jackals, in today's DaVinci Resolve tutorial, we'll make a text speech bubble effect that you can use for phone messages and we'll make this effect customizable and keep it simple. Now let's get digital. So the effect will look something like this. The text speech bubble will pop up, the text will be displayed and at the end, the text speech bubble will also fade out. What you can do though is also increase the duration and keep the ending animation simple as that and now let's just make it open the media pool right click make a new fusion composition give it a name you can change the duration if you want i'll just make a default one i think this is the default one at five seconds it is then simply select it and go into the fusion page now the first thing that we want to do is to make the text speech bubble background. Now we could use the polygons, rectangle or an ellipse, but we'll have an easier time if we actually use the shapes. Now in case you don't have them, you can go to the effects, tools and find the shapes. But you can also watch this video that will pop up on how to add these shapes to the actual toolbar. And I have it here. So in this case, I want to use rectangle shape we need render node so that we can display it now we can change the width and the height to what you want and it's best if you keep this composition in the center because at the end we'll use a transfer node so we can simply move this around but we have to display it now the difference between the shape rectangle and a normal rectangle is that you can't just adjust the values here you have to actually use the width and the height so maybe for now i'll just use 0 0.6 and 0 0.1 and one thing that i want to show you is that you can go as crazy as you want with this effect but i want to keep it simple so this is the crazy part so you can actually adjust the width of the rectangle depending on the length of the text and also the height but it doesn't work the best and that's why i'll just keep it simple so in this composition i'll go to the shape rectangle and just the corner radius maybe it's something like this and the next thing that i want to do is to add some kind of an arrow to achieve that i'll use an s and gone and we actually need an S boolean to combine the two. You could also use it like this if you wanted to. But in this case, I want a triangle. And in the S boolean, I'll have to change this to union. Now the angle will have to be positioned differently. So I'll adjust the angle. So I'll use minus 90. I'll use an equals. But you don't have to, because you can adjust these values separately if you need to. But you can always use equals to make an expression and connect it to the height or the width, depending on which one you connect it. And this will scale it up proportionately. Then simply position it where you want this to be. And then you can also use the angle to position it like this if you need to. But I'll just keep it as it was and you can also adjust the border width so it has a smooth edge and then just scale it down again so we have the base shape now to get an outline we have a shape outline so I'll simply add it to here this is good I don't know any other and better way to do this so I'll simply add another enter node and this one will be used as a solid so this one will be solid and this one will be a shape outline so now after this this will be a 2d space so we can use normal merge connect it like this and because this is the background this arrow has to go to the yellow input so Control t to switch between the inputs now we need to change the color of the shape and the outline and we could do it in the s boolean but this will change the color of both the outline and the shape so we'll actually use a background node and connect it after the renders so you have to connect it like this manually so this is the background and this one can be 
Now in the S outline, you can also adjust the thickness. And now because we're using the S boolean, what's good about this is that you can actually go to the S in gone, move this, and the outline also moves with it. So keep this in mind when you make the macro. Now after this, we'll add a text and connect it. Now you'll just type in the text how much you need and afterwards you'll adjust the width and the height of the rectangle and also position the angle. on. So in this case, I'll just type something out. So it doesn't look the best, so you have to change the font to what you want. I'll just use this one because all the PCs have it. The line spacing and also the size. And what you also may want to do is to adjust the horizontal anchor and then adjust the position. So maybe something like this. Now to animate this, you would go to the start of the animation, but I suggest you don't start the animation at frame zero, but maybe go to frame 10 and you can use the right on function. You could simply keyframe it like this, then go to the end of the animation when the whole text is displayed. And you would have a simple text animation. The alternative to this, let me just remove the keyframes. Instead of doing that, what you can do is right click in the text field and select follower. The modifier tab shows up, select it. In this case, I'm positioned on frame 10. And you can animate, by default, this is selected. So I'll select left, right. I want to animate between the first and the last character and I'll set this to 100 frames. And in this case, nothing actually happens. So what you have to do is go to the shadings tab and animate the opacity. So I'll animate the opacity, maybe the frame 10 will be when it's visible. And at frame 2, this will be set to zero. So this is now how it looks like. You can play around with the animation. So we can also adjust the keyframes. If I want to put this together, there's some graphical bug. So let me just purge the cache. So it can look something like this. And as you can see, the animation stops at frame 110, or it completes at this keyframe because the opacity was set to one at frame 10. So 10 plus 100 is 110. Now what you can also do is set this option between each character. Now in this case, you would maybe set two to three frames, but depending on the text length, this may not complete in time, at least not in this composition that is five seconds long, but now each character is basically displayed in two frames. So I'll just put this how it was, 210 between first and last character, so that we have something to work with. Now lastly, let's make the animation in the transfer node. I'll now simply position the pivot point to the bottom of the triangle, and I'll simply animate the size so it pops out. So this can start also at frame two. The size will be set to zero. So let's see at frame eight, we can overshoot a little bit. So maybe 1.2, let's see how that looks. And at frame 10, it will come back down to one. So this is the animation. We can then also go to the settings and enable the motion blur. and increase the quality if we need to. I'll just leave it turned off for now. Now to make this animation reversible, when it comes to the end, simply go to the transfer node. We'll select, in this case, the size. Right click, go to insert, anim, anim curves. The modifier tab shows up. And here we'll simply select the mirror option. And I'll go frame by frame. And as you can see, the animation finishes.
the same way that it started. Now if the animation that you have starts at frame 0, you will have some issues because the last frame of the animation will still be visible. So that is why you should start the animation after frame 0. Now we basically have the effect. You can change the text to be a typewriter like effect. I also have a video on how to do that. But in this case, I'll just show you how to make a macro. Now in this case, we want to be able to make a lot of changes. So the text is the first one that comes to mind. So I'll select it first. Then we want to be able to change the position. So the transform. We also want to be able to change the angle the position of the triangle and also the rectangle, the width and the height, maybe also the colors, so these two backgrounds, and I think this is about it. Then afterward select all of the other nodes that you don't need. Then right click on the last node in the composition and don't select the media out. Right click, macro, make one. Now because I've selected the text tool first, it shows up at the top. And I can simply select it here, so I can see what do I want to be able to change. So in this case, we have the text. So text here and text here. And we want to be able to change the style to text. This is what's inside the text box. The font. This is the style of the font. And the color. We want to be able to also change the size. Maybe the tracking and the line spacing. If you want to make any other adjustments, you can also enable them. So this is for the text, the layout. Maybe in the layout, we want to be able to change the center. So I'll enable that. And I think this is about it. Then we also have the follower. Do you want to be able to change anything? Maybe the order. So it's here, the delay type, and also the delay. So the delay type is here, not this one. Now the transform is red because the output is checked and this is correct because it is the last node in the composition. So inside of the transform, we want to be able to change maybe the center position, but definitely the pivot point. And we could also maybe be able to change the size if we want to adjust the animation and maybe the angle as well. So that's it. Then we have the Angon, which is this one. Now you could stack multiple shapes if you wanted to, but for each stack you would need another as boolean. So in the Angon, we can change the number of sides. We'll keep it solid. Maybe adjust the border width. Now this border width affects how sharp this triangle is and it doesn't affect this border width. In this case, I only have the height changeable. But if I didn't use an expression here, I would also enable the width. And I can also enable the angle so that I can position this triangle around the rectangle. And now I have the rectangle shape. I need the width and the height. And maybe also the angle and the current radius. And then lastly, I have the shape outline. And inside here, I would actually want to be able to change the thickness. And if need be, you can also animate this using the length and the position. But in this case, I won't be doing that. So this is it. Then go to File, Save as Group. If you use Save As, all of these nodes will be merged into one and you won't be able to open them. So Save as Group if you want to be able to change this anytime that you want. Then go to Fusion, Templates, Edit. This will be an overlay, so it will go to the titles. And maybe we'll use this as a SMS text. Then save it, close, and when we type in here SMS, we should be able to see it. We do. And when you click on it, we have all of the options that we've enabled. And now if you need to change any of the options that you maybe forgot to enable, you can simply go to the Fusion and Composition, double click, and you'll see all of the nodes that make up the effect. And you can also change them. And that's how you can make a simple text bubble effect in DaVinci Resolve. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more DaVinci Resolve and video editing content. And until next time, Jackals, keep it digital.